Hello everybody and welcome back to Europa. So we just won our war against Moravi. Uh, we also just dealt with this rebellion up here, which is causing us to actually lose a fair amount of money. And we're going to take out another loan if we don't do something about that. So let's go ahead and drop our army maintenance down to about there. That'll do for now. We need to group this army up over here. We do have Mombasa and Separatists thinking about revolting in Mombasa. Now, we did go for the monthly autonomy reduction, so it might be a decent option to go ahead and increase autonomy in some of these locations. Mombasa wouldn't be the best option because it would not make it completely go away. But maybe in Najran, yeah, that would be decent if we can pull it off. Najran is here. Most of this is actually because we have this missionary here. Hmm. That's plus six. And we have the separatism. We can't increase autonomy here. However, once this missionary is done, that'll pretty much all go away. We have the religious unity there and the active missionary and the intolerance. Yeah. Once that missionary is done, that'll be fine. He will be finished very soon, 7 January, so like, what, four months. The odds of this pro popping in that time is very, very low. Beja, those are some good opportunities there, actually. So let's go ahead and head over to Suakin, which is here. And let's take a look at our local autonomy over in this area. So we can go ahead and increase this and this. And this, and this. We cannot increase here in Berber. We could increase here, though, in Bayuda. So now we just have Berber. And potentially, we could make this go away. Via converting it. We also do need to core all of these provinces we just took. We're at 73% overextension. That's going to cause some issues, so we'll go ahead and sort by overextension and core like this. There. Excellent. Our corruption is growing primarily because of our overextension, so that's no good. We'll go ahead and try to balance this out a bit. How much do we have to be rooting out corruption so that it doesn't grow anymore? Right about there? Okay. We'll drop our army maintenance a little bit further. About like that. Now, hypothetically, we could probably make this not happen. Let's see. Intolerance, separatism, non-accepted culture, overextension. Yeah, we could make this not happen. So let's go ahead and increase our autonomy there, and we will just park this army directly on Mombasa, just to reduce the risk of this actually popping. 4.9 years. That shouldn't happen. Okay. Excellent. And that should be our rebels largely taken care of for now. So, let's think about our financial situation a bit. We have three loans left. We are currently paying 2.67 ducats a month in interest. We just renewed that loan. We do currently have a balance, which we should put towards rooting out our corruption a little bit more. There we go. Najran just converted. Excellent. Let's do Behan next. We do need to get our religious unity up rather desperately. It might be worth taking an idea group at Scientific Ex Experimentation, which actually has a missionary in it. It might be a good idea. Sale of titles. My lord, one of your advisors has suggested selling off titles of nobility to anyone who can afford to pay. It could bring in lots of money and open a way for social advancement for the rich if we do, but it would devalue the idea of nobility and perhaps upset the existing aristocratic families. Should we do this? Well, the nobility are already pretty angry at us. We do need the money. That's a free stability. That's a pretty good option. We're low on manpower. Increasing nobility loyalty would help out our manpower regeneration to some degree, although we may not hit the threshold for that. Uh, minus 10%. If we get it to 40%, then it would just be... Okay. 
That would be a 30% differential there. Plus a free stability, which is worth how much right now? 189 admin power. I would say 189 admin power is more valuable to us right now than 118 ducats. I mean, we do need the ducks, but we're making money. We're paying down our corruption, our debt is getting smaller. I think we're okay. Let's take the free stability. That brings us up to plus 20% manpower recovery speed. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I think we're doing fine here. Lol. <laughs> Our vassals fighting all of these all of these guys over here. Which reminds me, we should probably, since we are making some money, send our colonist to colonize Wadai. So we'll go ahead and do that. Milan has a civil war. Good for Milan. Good for you, Milan. Okay. Our truce with the Mamluks is over. Who are they currently allied with? Fadl and Lebanon still. Well, it was a little bit spooky last time. We are in a better position. I don't think we want to rush straight into a war, though. Specifically, not a big war with the Mamluks. I would like to fight the Mamluks, and I'd like to fight them very soon, especially now that the Ottomans have borders with them again. That was a dumb mistake on your part, Mamluks. Akkoi Unlu was giving you a pretty solid uh, buffer here, but that's no longer the case. So, yeah, I think we just chill for now. Chill, work on annexing a doll. I don't think we're making progress on that currently. No, we're not. We're not making progress on that currently because of our diplomatic reputation. But that's fine. That is just fine. So, we just sit here, and we wait. We are at 0 0.2 unrest here. Yeah, that'll probably never pop. It's not even popping up the notification anymore. We are currently regenerating 563 manpower a month. That's good. And 270 men are reaching the armies every month. Okay, we are at 19.5 and 2 in this army. We should maybe think about embiggening this army. Uh, we have a combat width of 27. Five is kind of an awkward number of cavalry. One of these came from our, from our vassal. Let's just go ahead and delete this cavalry unit. We don't want to have to deal with that for now. So let's do that. And we are currently at a combat width of 23 here. So if we take this up, how are we doing on supply? 25, 26, mm, that's a little, a little low. Let's wait on that until we get military tech 12, I believe. Mm. Somebody has mil tech 14, that's, that's scary. <laughs> we don't want to fight them. Is that the Ottomans? Is that you Ottomans? Nope, they're 13, okay. Well, let's just keep going for now. Let's actually go ahead and delete this fort in Najran. I don't think we need it anymore. Nobody's really... Nothing's really happening on that front currently. Oman is currently occupying all of this. That's interesting. But we just need to keep on trucking. Once this month tick happens, are we still losing money? No. We're gaining three ducats a month. 3.3. We can put that into rooting out more corruption. Potentially all the way up to the max if we drop our army maintenance a little bit further. Hmm, that puts us into a kill one uprising. Oh, wow. They are really angry. Okay. That is, of course, all of these that we just took. Okay, yeah. I mean, they have a right to be angry. This is going to be 33,000 troops. We should go through and increase autonomy anywhere we can along here, just to delay this a little bit, and more importantly, maybe reduce the, uh, reduce the number of troops that they spawn. 
76 there. Unfortunate. Okay. And we're gonna start moving this army down here. Okay. So this is almost certainly still going to happen. 0 0.2 years. Still 33k. It's fine. We just need to wait until our other army gets down here, so... It did not wait. <laughs> still happened one month later. Okay. We're gonna wait on converting a province just because we need the, the money. And we're going to reduce our rooting out corruption down to about there. Our corruption will be growing momentarily. Once we finish these, that will no longer be the case. And then we'll max out our army maintenance and then just go up till we're just breaking even on rooting out corruption. And then we'll move these guys down to Mazima. And we're going to get 10 years of separatism. That's that's fine. 9,000 cavalry. They have some wacky flanking going on there. In fact, they're going to get a penalty for that, I believe. I don't know what the peasant revolt, in, uh, or not peasant revolt, separatist revolt uh, infantry cavalry ratio is. But luckily, they're just sitting there for now. If we go, would we fight them? Nope. So we're going to go ahead and go into here, and we'll take this back. There we go. Renewing our loan. Okay. And now we, we are at full morale, so we move both of our armies in simultaneously. This is going to be a messy fight. Very, very messy fight. But we're going to win it. Barely. Okay. And now we'll go ahead and move this guy back up. Eh, we'll move him. We'll move him to our capital, so he's a bit more centrally located. And this guy will just stay here. We can purchase an ability, which we should do. Resistance to Reformation. Let's do it. <laughs> what could go wrong? Okay, let's go ahead and convert a province now. Now that we can drop our army maintenance back down almost to zero. I would really like to be drilling at this time, but that is not to be. So we'll go ahead and do something like that. I'm relatively happy with making a ducat a month for right now. Our corruption is currently at 5.5, so that is excellent. And we took that. We'll park these guys back on Mombasa. The military ideas of Hagos, that is our wife. Throughout her life, spanning back to her time in Zabid, Hagos has developed a good grasp on military strategy, enabling her to participate in many discussions on the topic. Her senses are clearly governed by reason, while her ideas often concern the troops as a whole and how to best care for the men themselves, for the human being behind the warrior's mask. This has led to our generals often holding the thoughts of the Atej in high regard. Excellent. 50 free military power. Well, that's a free general, at least. That's not bad at all. Brabant has joined the Republic. Have fun with that, Brabant. <laughs> That's going to be exciting for them, I'm sure. How close are we to getting a little bit more caught up in a tech? Quite a ways. Lovely. One of the richest men in Ethiopia has died without an heir. He was a well-known patron of religion and the arts. So we could gain a philosopher... We can't afford to employ him, really. Or the state could gain the money. We'll do that. We need that money desperately. We just need to put it towards paying things off. Getting our economy in shipshape order. Which we're going to need going forward. We're very close to having our economy in shipshape order. Just need a couple more ticks of the corruption going down. Native Assimilation in Wadai. Excellent, 100 population. So, we are currently making money, even with our colonist up. That is super good. We need to pay off one of these loans as soon as we can. We need to pay... how much for that? 290? Okay. That'll be a while at, at these earnings rates. But it should be fine. Once we're no longer rooting out corruption, that'll be a big deal. 
and that'll go significantly faster once our overextension is gone, which should be just about gone. Yep, here we go. We are just about to finish all of these. Importing naval supplies. Ambitions to improve our nation's navy has recently come to a halt. The Ethiopian shipbuilders don't lack ideas or plans, but supplies. Some of them cannot help but notice, they claim, that our neighbor has an abundance of materials that would be useful in equipping a modern navy. We try not to make our fleet dependent on foreign support, but if these policies stand in the way of progress, perhaps we could import just enough to test the new shipbuilding techniques. Well, 60 dip power. Mogadishu would like us better. They're a vassal. They're not exactly foreign. We'll go ahead and do that. 60 dip power. Excellent. And there's our core provinces. So now, we are currently about five years away from having our corruption completely gone. That is fantastic. We have a rebel uprising, so fallen separatists. 1.6 years, Quelimelane and Sofala, right down here. Okay. We'll move these guys down here. It's only two provinces, so they're only going to be spawning 16k troops. And this will be happening when? 1.6 years. Okay. Once they get to 90%, we'll start taking it a little bit more seriously. We are losing our great power status. I blame the fact that we do not have our institution. Although we could embrace it if we had the money. That would be interesting, actually. We should probably do that, even if we go into more debt. Maybe? Maybe we should. That would be, what, about four loans? We're just about out of debt right now. I think we wait on that. I think we let ourselves get out of debt, and then we can think about taking on that 1,000 ducat cost. Are these guys at 90 yet? No? Okay. They're actually going down. They are at 4.0 instead of their previous. That's good. Huge amount of it was the overextension, which is now gone, so there is that. We just need to take over the rest of Muravi whenever we can, which, of course, will not be for a while. Our truce doesn't end until 84, another 11 years. By then, our finances should be in tip-top order. Absolutely. We do not currently have an idea group that really helps with our finances, but it'll be okay. Just fine. How much are we making? 0.3? Okay. Hey, we converted another province. Excellent. Religious unity is good. So we'll go ahead and convert yet another. And we do need to be thinking a bit about our unbalanced research. Times of need. The dynasty of our noble Nagusa Nagast Somalanid is certainly a powerful one. Through Demestros I, they rule our nation and will do so for many years to come. However, even the great are sometimes in need of help. Thankfully, the Salamanid family has tied strong bonds to other great powers, such as the Salamanid house led by none other than Susenios, this guy, Ross of Medribari. His gracious wife, Abeba, is a daughter of our own royal house and an invaluable contact. Perhaps we shall ask her if she can influence her husband to lend us a hand. Well, we could use some... could use some money. Let's, let's get some money from them. See if we can get our economy even more under control. I doubt they're going to give us much, if anything. And there is our Sofalan Separatists. 16k right there. Completely missed it. Oh, we are currently unpaused. A helping hand. Finally, we have heard back from our dearest Abeba regarding our request for her husband. The most no noble, Ross Susenios I, has decided to grant it. The reply returned with coffers of gold to fill our emptying treasury. A letter of thanks shall be sent immediately to the generous Ross Susenios I. Long may he reign. He gave us ten ducks. Thanks, bro. Okay, so they took Safala. We are going to need to max out our army maintenance temporarily. We'll run a deficit for a little while. Couple of months here. Treason against Ethiopia. Oh no, 
The nobles are being jerks. We could lose army professionalism. Or we could gain army professionalism. Let's do that. Okay. So, we do need to wait for our morale to increase here. They have the option of staying put, or walking into us and crossing this river, or going into Moravi territory. I'm fine with all three of those options. Grant export licenses. When the crown could not or would not pay cash to the nobles, they would instead grant them the privileges to collect special revenues from which they could make a healthy profit. We can grant them their privileges, giving us a plus 10% tax income boost, but losing 10 legitimacy. I think we go for this. That would give the nobility loyalty, bringing them back up above 40, and the 10% tax modifier would be great. So we'll go ahead and do that. And one more month. Oh, they're actually walking into us. That is fine. Rip them. <laughs> Get out of here. Silly rebels. Okay. Now we no longer need our army maintenance up. So we'll go ahead and drop it back down to there. We'll not put it exactly at minimum so that we do have some men trickling in. But we don't need it nearly as high. There we go. Excellent. And we are currently less than four years away from having our corruption gone. This is fantastic. Accommodation with natives in Wadai. The local native population seems to be more accepting of our presence. This will have great benefits in the long run. They lose one ferocity. Sounds good. Very, very good indeed. Dawasir will no longer transfer trade power to us. That's fine. That peace deal expired. Horse population boom. A horse is best bought as a cavalry mount at the age of three or four. Fortunately for us, over the last few years, we have an above average amount of horses born. This increase in supply has made the recruitment of cavalrymen much cheaper. I don't think I've ever seen that event before. That's an interesting event. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, we are currently making some money. We can build province improvements, and it might not be a bad idea to invest in this. Let's go ahead and do that. We're mostly paying down our corruption right now, so that is just fine. We're renewing our loans still. <laughs> but once, we, once we're no longer rooting out corruption, we're going to be making a ton of money. So absolutely no financial concerns once this is gone here in another three and a quarter years. None whatsoever, in fact. Let's see. Yeah, we, we should be okay. Even with our army maintenance full, we should be making money, especially if we can get our inflation down. Which we do need to be looking into... Hey, we died. Okay. Our old monarch died. We now have a regency. She is in charge. I'm okay with that. She has great stats, particularly in administrative. Sounds good. When can we switch over to Diplo Focus? We need to do that next year. 11 months. Okay. Because our rulers have had so few dip points coming in. We desperately need to get that going. And we probably want a dip advisor if we can. Unfortunately, we also really need an inflation reducer like this guy. This guy would be great. Why are we losing money right now? Is it just because we lost a modifier that our previous monarch had? Probably. We'll go ahead and drop our army maintenance. About like that. And we'll drop one tick of rooting out corruption. Make that two ticks of rooting out corruption. There we go. Profiteering in Al Junehar. Junaihar? Junaynahar. I think Junaynahar. The citizens of Al Junaynahar have grown tired of our of the local influence of greedy Medribari merchants they claim are using unfair advantages to outcompete local businesses. They demand that we step in to limit the influence of foreign traders on the area and reaffirm the privileges of our own merchants and artisans. If we do not act, they might take matters into their own hands. Well, we could protect our trade, make Medribari angry, but I don't think we need to do that. I think we're okay not doing that. Okay, Spain is spying on us, apparently. 
that's not good. We're going to go ahead and drop our rooting out corruption slightly, and we are going to go for this yearly inflation reduction advisor once we have the money. That, I think, would be good, because our inflation is getting intense. We are at 25% inflation right now, and we need to deal with that. Very, very badly indeed. Once we get Admin Tech 14, we will probably take economic ideas, primarily for this right here, yearly inflation reduction. That would be excellent. In fact, we haven't actually taken anything in exploration ideas. We may want to abandon this group and just go ahead and take economic ideas. We do have two admin idea groups, which is unfortunate, but economic ideas is just so good. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we can also take two of these. We can't get three. Getting up to the national bank would be huge. And interest per annum would be nice too. Monthly autonomy change, land maintenance modifier, all of these are really, really solid. So yeah, I, I think that's what we want to do. Yeah, we just do that. We'll, we'll take this. However, we're not going to take this one just yet. Okay. We can convert this province to Coptic, and so we shall. Excellent. And we're now making 10% more from taxation. So we are actually making a pretty solid amount of ducks. We'll go ahead and bump that back up to full, just so that we get our corruption down ASAP. We lost a general. It was the one up here. This general. This general. There we go. Well, we'll put in our crappy general for now. That would be interesting, at least. And we are actually almost to the point where we can swap over to a diplomatic focus for March. So right about now. There we go. And our noble Atij Regent is a powerful one, and we can ask her dynasty for stuff. Let's see if she'll give us money. Hopefully she will. That would be, an, that would be amazing. Sale of titles. Hey, this again. Gold is the sign of nobility. Get out of here, nobility. We want your money. <laughs> Excellent. Broken promises. She did not give us money. Unfortunate. Well, we are currently at 2.23 corruption. We are just about there as far as corruption goes. So that is super excellent. 2.16. Going down every single month. We also do not currently have any rebels slated for coming up. I want to go into the stability tab. Mamlukian rebels would be the next. Aswan and Kwasir. We can park these guys directly in Aswan. And Kwasir, we can just go ahead and do that. And that'll make them far less likely to pop. And then we can do the same in Aswan, honestly. We're not getting much out of it anyway. So we'll go ahead and just do that. Yeah, trade conflict CB lost. That is just fine. Absolutely spectacular. Renewing loans. Also spectacular. We do need to pay off these three loans. But like I said, we will be making stupid amounts of money once we are rooting out corruption. Or once we are finished rooting out corruption. There we go. Akkoyunlu has internal conflicts. Good luck with that, Akkoyunlu. And we are apparently on speed 4. That explains why things are acting a little laggy. There. Speed 3. That's better. This is the speed I'm used to playing on. That explains a lot, actually. So what is our 4.6 there still? How much did that slow this down by? 7.5 years. That's actually probably going to go away. Entirely. Independence for Beja in 16 years, 3.8, 9.2, 107one Yeah, we're pretty stable right now. This is great. 
we're in a fantastic position currently. Adal is re is re being annexed, re re being annexed because they weren't before, but they were, and now they're now they are again. Irrelevant. It's using four diplomatic power each month. It's going to be done in July of seventy nine. Super good, right there. Super super good. One point three nine corruption. Two more years, and it'll be completely gone. So we are pretty much entirely out of our crisis mode at this point. I'm just kind of chilling to get us entirely out of the crisis mode. But we are going to be going to war again relatively soon, and it's probably going to be against the Mamluks, although I do see that Tunis took Alexandria. I am sad. That makes me sad. So we're going to have to fight Tunis. They are still al allied with the Ottomans. We'll have to find some friends to beat the Ottomans with. The Commonwealth is really cracking into Muscovy over here. Who do the Ottomans hate? The Ottomans hate the Commonwealth and Spain and Ming. Okay. And Hungary. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. We have some potential friends up there to fight the, the Mamluks with. And we're just over a year until our corruption is completely gone. So that is absolutely excellent. Well, I do believe I'm going to put a cut in here. Next episode, we will probably stop chilling and go fight somebody. But until then, I'll see you all next time.